So row and column are frequently used to arrange widgets in horizontal and vertical fashion respectively. Both these widgets have a children property which takes a list of widgets. We will be taking an example of row here and the knowledge is transferable to column widget. Right now I have a center widget in which I have a simple text. So let us say instead of this we want to have three buttons horizontally that is along the x-axis. So we have to use a row widget for it. To use it, we simply replace this text with a row. And in this row, we have to add a children property. Now this children property requires a list of widgets in which we have to add multiple widgets. So in this case, I'll add three simple buttons. That is button one, button two, and button three. So when I hot reload the app, you can see that there are three buttons arranged horizontally in the center. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to wrap the row in a container. So I'll just wrap the row in a container and I'll give the container a color of colors.red. The reason for adding a container to the parent of the row is just to make you see that the row is taking full width of the screen, that is the available space. So what if we want to change that? For this, what we can do is add a simple property to the row that is main axis size. And for the row, the main axis is always going to be the x axis. And by adding this main axis size, what we can simply do is we can call main axis size dot min. And if I save the app, you can see that the row is now taking only the space that is required by its children. And if we set this main axis size to max and I save it, you can see that the row is now taking the full width of the screen. And the main axis size dot max is the default value for the main axis size. So let's keep this main axis size to max so that the row can take the entire width of the container. So what we need to do now is we need to align the children along the main axis. That is the x axis for the row. So for that, what we can do is we can simply use main axis alignment. And by default, the main axis alignment is set to start. And if we set the main axis alignment to center and save it, you can see that all the children move to the center of the row. And if I change this to end and save it, children move to the end of the row. And other than the start, center, and end, we can also set space between. And by using this property, all the children will have equal space in between them. And there is another property that is called space around. And what this will do is that each of the child is having a space around it. So you can see that by using different values for the main axis alignment, you can align the children of the row along the axis in multiple ways. So at this point, you can see that the height of the row is only the height that is required by its children. So just to give the row some extra height, what I need to do is I need to add the height to the container and I'll just keep the height to 200. So right now, even if it's not visible, the row is taking the entire height of the container. So just to prove that, I can use another property that is called cross axis alignment. And the cross axis alignment in case of row refers to the y axis. So by default, the cross axis alignment for the row is at the center. And if I change the cross axis alignment to start, and as soon as I save the app, you can see that the content of the row moves to the top. That is the cross axis alignment dot start. And if I change the cross axis alignment to end, and I save it, the children of the row move to the very end of the container. And if we change it back to the center, all the children move to the center of the container. At this point, we can have another question that when we set the cross axis alignment to start and save the app, why did the views move towards the top of the container? And the answer is quite simple, that by default, the vertical direction of the row is from top to bottom. And there is another property to alter this behavior. That is the vertical direction itself. And by adding the vertical direction to the row, we can set this vertical direction to up. And by setting this vertical direction to up, we're saying the row to change its vertical direction from bottom to top. And now if I save the app, all the views move downwards. So when I set the vertical direction to up, the start now moves to the bottom because the row is now pointing from bottom to top. And when we set the vertical direction to down and save the app, the cross axis alignment start makes the views move to the top because now the row is pointing from top to bottom. So in the same way, we can also change the direction of views from left to right. And for that, we have to use a simple property called text direction. And by default, the direction of views in horizontal axis for a row is from left to right. So in this case, if I change the text direction, 
from right to left that is using RTL and save the app you can see that the button 3 comes first then the second and then the first and if I change it back to LTR that means left to right the button 1 comes first 2 comes second and 3 comes third in the same order that we're giving it to the children property so basically the default vertical direction of row is from top to bottom so when we set the cross axis alignment to start it moves the views to top and if we change the vertical direction to up the row will now point to bottom to top and the cross axis alignment of start will move the views to the bottom so these are the properties that you will require most when using the row widget so the properties of the column are similar to that of the row and the knowledge is transferable so if I change the row to a column and save the app you can see that the buttons get transferred to a vertical fashion and to make it a bit more appealing I can add a simple width to the container and let's just make it 400 and save the app and right now the cross axis becomes the x axis and the main axis becomes the y axis because the column aligns the children from top to bottom so the main axis is the y axis and the cross axis is the x axis so right now we have the main axis size of max so the column is taking the full height of the container we have the main axis alignment to space around so each child widget is having a space around them we also have a cross axis alignment to start and the cross axis in case of column is the x axis so all the views shift to the left hand side because by default the container is moving from left to right because we have the text direction of left to right so you have to keep only one thing in mind that the vertical direction deals with the y-axis and the text direction deals with the x-axis and how the vertical direction and text direction affect the main axis and the cross axis depends upon the view that is in case of the column the main axis is the y-axis and in case of the row the main axis is the x-axis and just by experimenting with these views you can understand these properties in a much better way because rows and columns are one of the most frequently used widgets in flutter development and if you find this video useful subscribe to retro portal studio for more detailed widget videos in flutter widget essential series